All right, all right. We heard the bell. We heard the bell. Let's get going. It's time to start thinking. You two, and of course, everyone on this team already. Uh, welcome back to Kestava Engineering. My name is Rich, and today we are going over another PE exam review problem to get all of you engineers, engineers in training, ready for the PE exam. And if you stick around to the end, we actually talk about what I believe is such a small piece of information, but it's something that I think all structural engineers use about 90% of the time to eradicate the problems that they run into. I think you'll like it and it'll help you crush the PE exam. I guarantee it. See everybody in there. Here's our problem for the day. Uh, a bracket is anchored to a concrete wall using a bolt screwed into an embedded insert as shown in the figure. The tension in kips uh, in the bolt is most nearly what? So we always underline our problem, right? So we're looking for tension in kips. So everything here, even though units aren't given, is in kips. So we want to make sure that we stick to that when we're doing our problem here. So this one is, uh, I'd call this structural, but I'd say this is not to get anyone down, but this is simple enough that I don't believe you'd find something like this on the structural specific afternoon portion of the exam, but in the morning breath, which every civil engineer needs to take, you would find a question very similar to this, I believe. So this, this is a good one. So if you can conquer this, I think you'll be set if you're not structural specific. So we have 12 kips acting downward, and there is a, and that's acting three inches from the face of the concrete wall. So here's your concrete wall right here. So first that generates a moment, right? Because we have a force and we have a perpendicular distance. So let's find that moment. And this is, as you can see, it's not specified in LRFD or ASD or anything like that. This is just a nominal capacity. So no load factors applied. They didn't give you anything that hints at needing to use load factors here. So, so just M, we'll just call it M, not M ultimate or M required or anything. Just M is going to equal your force, which is 12 kips times your perpendicular distance. Cause that's what moment is. And that is three inches. That comes out to 36 kip inch. And what is happening there is that is the moment that's happening about your, your anchor in the concrete. But you might be saying, well, how is, how is moment transferring into that, into that anchor? Like, is it, is it just prying the anchor? Well, it's not doing that because the way that we resolve moment is through. Yep. Yep. You, you, you way in the back next to Jose, not Jose. Yeah. That's right. Through a fricking couple. And so where's our couple? I'm going to go blue here. Our couple is going to be the bolt and then the edge of our plate. Because what's happening now to resolve that moment, you are creating now a tensile force and a compressive force. And the way that you find those compressive and tensile forces is you divide your moment by the length of your couple. So the distance between the tension and compression, which is going to be that dimension there, which look at that. We're going to switch back to red is given to you eight inches because what's happening is that bolt. Uh, let's draw it further down here to show you what's happening because that bolt is wanting to get pulled out. And then what's happening is say, say everything started moving here, right? So what would start to happen is this plate, you just, just think about it like, like real world application, like when you were a kid on how things broke, how that shelf that was anchored into your drywall at home, how that broke, how it ripped out of the wall. Because what happened was you applied a force on it and now that force is starting to bend that plate off of the wall. And as that happens, that's going to pull, it's going to start to pull that anchor out of the wall in order to pry that, uh, pry that plate off of the wall. The bolt needs to start to, uh, to fail and start to slide out, which means that that's going to start to move. So you have tension here. And then at the very bottom, you actually have restraints. We have restraint basically at the bottom of the plate, 
which is the concrete wall, because it's not, it's not, um, there's no positive connection anywhere else on that plate. That plate's just sucked onto the wall and held in place by that screw. So that screw is our positive connection. So as that plate tries to rotate, it's free to move at the top in terms of uh, rotation, but it's restrained at its base, which means that you're going to have a force that's pushing into that reaction point. So that force is going to be compression. So there is your force couple that we've shown up here in blue. Get all that out of there. So that makes it pretty straightforward, right? Because now we have a moment, we have our couple length, and we know that um, tension slash compression is equal to your moment divided by the distance, we'll just call it D, and that right there is D. So that's gonna break down into 36 kip inch divided by eight inches. And we make sure that our units are good, right? So kip inch divided by inch, so those just go away. So tension slash compression, we're only looking for tension in, in this case, that's the only thing being asked, is equal to 36 divided by eight, which is 4.5 kips. We've kept it in kips, we've kept the units, that looks good to me. And if we stay where we are, we have an answer that looks good too. So we have our answer, but before you go anywhere, remember the key thing about this video is couples. Couples are what resolve moment. That's basically the only thing to it. Um, otherwise, you're, you're going to have either an overly complex system or you're just going to have a system that statically just really doesn't work out uh, on a whole because couples and force couples are just the bread and butter of basic statics and really the built environment around us. That's how we get away with doing so much of what we do. It might seem simple, but that's, that's mostly it. Uh, they can become more complex, but at the end of the day, it comes down to just that. So, so today's less about the problem and more about understanding how to identify what your couple is. So think about that. All you structurals out there, Every problem that you encounter, when you have a moment introduced, start taking the time to think about where that couple is that can help resolve that moment. Because once you break it down into tensile and compressive forces, then it starts to get easy again. So take that with you. If you liked today's video, always remember, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't. And this is Rich with Kesteva. I'll see everybody next time. Later.